fruits, Christmas, and a little worm. Let's start with the banana. This is so strange. I can't believe I'm reviewing a banana. I've created my favorite pattern, the banana phone. Seems like it's just a two by two by three. I can turn it this way and this way in half and this way. Wow. I find this puzzle to be very appealing. Step one, recover banana handle. Okay, I'm gonna scramble up this banana and just in case you guys don't know, a two by two by three is really similar to a square one in how you'd solve it. So my years of training will definitely pay off here. So on the long axis, you can only turn it 180 degrees. It doesn't like shape shift on this axis, but then everything else you can do like 90 degree turns. So I'll start with the top of the banana if that's what you call the top. I think monkeys actually peel from the other side. So this could be the bottom of the banana. Right, this piece looks like it's, it belongs here and it's the correct height. And I'm gonna pair it up with its, uh, the other piece. So these two go together. It probably goes with that one. Uh, oh yeah, so I can just do that, put them together and move it to the other side. Wow, I got a skip on the top here. So basically next I'd go to the last layer, which is the other side of the banana, and I would swap two pieces with a J perm, which is this alg, if you know it from square one. So it looks like these two are correct. Okay, it seems like I have also skipped the middle layer. That was the dumbest solve ever, but here's the alg I would have used for the middle layer to swap two pieces. Okay, so I got a last two layer skip on my first ever banana solve. Wait, wait, wait. This might not be right actually. This. This doesn't look like it's aligning properly. Yeah, that definitely doesn't look solved to me anymore. Okay, so I think these two pieces need to swap. So that would be done uh, using this. R2, U2, R2. This is, feels so stupid. R2, U2, R2. All right, that definitely looks better. All right, now it's a solved banana. Okay, I didn't get a last two layer skip, but uh, it was pretty close. Okay, I'm done with this. Okay, on to the lemon. So I guess this is kind of like a mirror cube. We have big size and small size. So if you turn it like that, we have this side goes in, this side sticks out. So it shouldn't be that hard to solve. Okay, I tried to make the checkerboard pattern and I actually got exactly what's on the box. Ha, outsmarted. One thing about this lemon is it doesn't stand. It can only stay here and you can still roll it around. But what you can do is swap some centers around. So, all right, hang on. There we go, now it's a little lemon house. So I don't know why I'm showing you, but there's a normal three by three core inside. I've actually taken this apart as a poor attempt to make a joke about lemonade, but I don't think I'll be able to make any. Oh my God, that edge isn't flipped. And lastly, the apple. Sweet. Okay, I'm sorry for all these bad fruit jokes. I apologize. Ooh, this apple actually turns pretty well. They missed the opportunity to make the inside an apple color, like red or green. No, 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 the inside of an apple's yellow. But yeah, I really love this stem as well. I could probably pull it out. Let's try the same thing as what I did on the lemon. Perfect. Okay, let's do a solve on the apple cube. I think the lemon cube would be pretty similar and I think this one turns and looks better. So before we start, I just wanna point out something. The corners are all the same which means that I can put any corner anywhere. And I think the F2L edges are the same as well. You know, if I'm choosing this to be my bottom layer. So it looks like I can get pretty creative with F2L. All right, let's scramble this up. Uh, I don't even know what a cross piece is. Um, this one might be one. Let's just try putting it there. That matches up. Okay, so for picture cubes and for anything with the center, whether it's center orientation matters, then you need to like move this out of the way and then get that center oriented correctly and then put it back. So yeah, this does look like a cross piece and it's smooth all the way through. That looks like a cross piece. Um, so actually before I move it down, I can align it, oops, align it like that. No, that's not right. I think this needs to be flipped. All right, I finished the cross and I got all these side centers to line up right. Now I have to do F2L and I think this is where I can get pretty creative. So here I have a solved edge and a solved corner so I can do pseudo slotting. Um, let me just see if I can do this. I think it looks longer this way. I think this is the bottom of the corner. So, uh, where's an edge? Is that an edge? Oh, this is a pair. This, uh, it's not paired properly. This, okay, any, I'm just gonna do it. So, uh, doing my, you know, my F2L thing, because I'm, I'm good at that. There we go. Oh, wow, okay, so I've solved two F2L slots. Now I have, uh, 
This corner is not solved, it's a bit bumpy here. This corner it is skipped. So I'm just going to insert an edge here and do pseudo slotting again. Uh, let's see, this edge might go there. I don't know how. Okay, so solved edge, solved corner, and I'm gonna solve these two together. So here's my corner, and I think the long way points that way, so it's like white on top. And actually, yeah, you can visually see me pairing these two together. Amazing, intuitive F2L. Okay, and uh, now for last layer. All right, so there's my line, and these pointy things are going outwards, so it's, uh, I'm having Apple amnesia where I can't do my algorithms as soon as I'm on an Apple cube. Very common thing to happen. Uh -huh. So after OLL, actually, I just realized I don't need to do PLL, but there is a problem, which is this corner, and I realized this corner was in wrong. It's a little bumpy here. So I think this corner should be twisted clockwise, uh, and so that means I can do uh, just a two corner twist here. I did the wrong corner twist, I'll try that again. <laughs> All right, and there's a solved apple. So I'll probably put these next to the panda and tiger so you can see them in future videos. And together they'll live appley ever after. The 2x2 Weipo WRM is a cube I got a little while ago but forgot to open it. Okay, this outer part feels so weird. It feels like it's still in a packaging. Even though I already took off two, it's just super shiny and doesn't feel like most plastics. This could be the tensions, but it feels really odd and elasticy. So it is magnetic, but even then I am overshooting a lot. I have no idea if this has to do with whether or not I'm used to it, but I've definitely had better experiences out of the box than this. It was completely dry and I just lubed it and it has gotten a little bit better, but I don't feel really comfortable on it yet. The best way I can describe this is when I'm turning fast, the layers aren't where I expect them to be, and so I mess up my turning a lot. The accessory box just has some extra magnets and a screwdriver, nothing else really special, so that's about it. So you'll hear more from me on this cube if I really like it, but for now, I don't like it very much. Next is the Speed Cube Shop Holiday Bundle. By the way, this is on sale right now at Speed Cube Shop. I'm not a huge fan of the candy cane smell, but I can get festive for Christmas. You can also get the bigger mat version, but I like this size of mat for going to competitions as it doesn't take up too much space. So unlike the Halloween one having a bunch of unusual colors, this one I can pretty much say that these two can be white and yellow. They're pretty similar. This can be orange, red, green, blue. So I'll just sticker them in the normal color scheme, making sure that all of them come up with it. There we go. So I'll try to get the centerpiece accurately on and the rest would be right. Okay, that's not bad. Then I'm just gonna make sure that I press from one side to the other side on each of these sticker pieces so I don't get any air bubbles. And that looks pretty good. Who am I kidding? I'll never get this right. All right, so the stickers are on and this is what I'll call the gray side, not totally reflective. And this side will be like the mirror side. Right now the turning is not very good. I'm gonna put in some candy cane. So remember this is not food, don't eat it. Much like with the fruits, make sure you are at least three years old. So it smells like candy cane. I don't actually dislike the smell of candy cane. I just probably don't like eating candy cane because I don't really like mint so much, but it does smell nice and it reminds me of Christmas. So I'll just put a couple drops in. I'm not trying to make it amazing, so just there should be fine. All right, definitely way more usable now. Let's do a timed solve. So I'm gonna be making the mirror cross first, which is my white here. So let me find my cross pieces, blue, red, green, orange, that's easy. I'm not gonna look ahead to the first pair. All right, <laughs> red, blue. So I think once I recognize, it's gonna be fine, but the trouble is gonna be recognizing pairs properly. But once I get better at that, this should be absolutely no problem. So there's three F2L pairs. And last, is it that? Yeah, it's that one. Okay, and then OLL and PLL should be fine. Just gotta make sure that's solved. Yeah, okay, 29 seconds. I hope I can get a sub 10 on this once I get better with recognition. But uh, for now, that's gonna be it. So links to everything are in the description and make sure you use the discount code JPERM at Speed Cube Shop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.